Okay, welcome in. In this video, we're going to be discussing uh, simulations, specifically uh, simulating discrete Markov chains, which are um, very cool, popular objects in the world of probability. This video is going to assume you know a little bit about Markov chains. I'll link a uh, uh, um, resource below to, to learn more if you want to brush up on it. Um, but without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, the first line, other than the library we call, which I'll, which I'll get to later, um, this is a common line that we use in uh, different simulations, um, which is setting the seed. And you've probably seen it before. It basically establishes um, kind of a, a jumping off point for the random data we're going to be drawing. Um, this is really useful if we want to run the process again and get the same kind of random path. Setting the seed ensures that we will do that. Um, the next step is actually just setting up the transition matrix. I called it uh, Q here. I uh, do that with a matrix function. This is a simple three by three matrix. And again, you know, hopefully you're familiar with this concept, but each row gives the transition probabilities from one state to another. So for example, uh, this number tells us that uh, if we go from state, start in state one in the next period, the probability that we return to state one is uh, 0.4 or 40%. The probability that we go to state two is um, 0.3, 30%, et cetera. In general, the, the ij value is the probability of going from state i to state j um, in one time step. Um, this just tells us we want to have a three by three, and the by row argument um, tells us we want to kind of the computer to read the matrix like this. Uh, those, those are the rows. So we define our matrix Q. We run that. It is now in our system. Um, and what's cool about Markov chains is that we can uh, find the probabilities of a, a multi-step chain by raising the chain to a power or the, raising the transition matrix to a power. And that's where this library exponent, I think it's exponent math um, comes in. So we want to load that and that unlocks this really cool operator, the um, percent caret percent operator, which allows us to take the power of a matrix. So if I wanted to like, you know, normally if I want to raise something to the power of two, I would just do, you know, four caret two. Um, that doesn't quite work with matrices um, because what happens is um, we just end up squaring each individual value. Um, and, and this obviously is no longer a valid transition matrix because the rows don't sum to one. Um, and that's something that I should have mentioned in the original transition matrix. You notice all the rows sum to one because each state needs a probability of one of where it's actually going to go. Um, so this uh, operator does the actual nice matrix to a power calculation, the correct like linear algebra example. Um, and you can see here, you know, the rows still sum to one. And this is basically telling us the probability, you know, this number is telling us the probability of going from starting at state one, and then in three steps, regardless of the path in between, in three steps, the probability of going back to state one, and that's 20.5%. 20 20 and what's interesting is you can already kind of see the columns look a little bit more similar. Like all these numbers are kind of close to 0.2. These numbers are close to you know 0.27 here. It's close, it's a little bit higher. And what's cool is that um, if you, you know, raise, the transition matrix to a high enough power, which I do here with, with 10,000, you're going to get what's called a stationary distribution. And this is, um, you know, a lot of cool stuff about this, but we can think about it as uh, in the long run, these are the proportions of time that an object on this Markov chain will spend in each state. So, you know, at any random point in the long run, we expect the object or the particle or whatever to be in state one, 17.5% of the time, state two, 22.5% of the time, and state three, 0.6 or you know, 60% of the time. And again, these, all these rows are the same because this is just telling us that you know, this is where we expect um, all, the particle to hang out in the long run. This makes sense if we look at the original matrix, like we have a lot of density in the third column. You know, state three, you know, very often goes back to state three. And, uh, and that's, you know, so it kind of makes sense that, that it ends up most often um, there. Okay, so let us actually now simulate this chain. Uh, we're gonna define our number of steps as 10. We're gonna de define the starting state as one that could be, you know, whatever you want. And then we're gonna run a simple for loop where we just iterate um, for however many number of steps we want to. Um, and now this is the crucial uh, kind of randomness aspect. We're using the sample function. I love the sample function. Um, Essentially, we want to draw a random state and, you know, that we just draw the random state from uh, one to however big Q is. So we draw the random state from one, two, three. Those are the states. We want to draw one random state. That's why size equals one. And this is where we choose like the probability. We actually use the, the transition matrix to give the probability of, of transitioning. And in this case, 
you notice this is Q. We're, we're looking at a specific row of Q. So I, I essentially have this operator where you know before the comma is the row and after the comma is the column here you know this is the specific row and then the column is this is empty so it's saying we want all the columns um and this is telling us we want uh uh we want state but specifically we want we want to index into state we want to get the last value of state so this is saying index into state into you know length of in this case length of state is just one because state is just you know uh, one single number so uh this is saying grab the the first row of q which is you know this probability oh added an extra see there this is the probability distribution of of um you know going to states one two and three so that's that's how the sample you know function works with the markov chain we can generate it and boom we we transition to state two and now you know um, it, it, you know, if we wanted to, well, first we, we're going to bind that onto our state. So we just concatenate with the C function, uh, state and the new state. And now we can see our, our Markov chain started in one and, and moved to two. Um, and now if we ran this sample function, we would get a different, um, probability, uh, distribution here. Um, because again, we're looking at state, but we're looking at the second, uh, you know, we're indexing into the second, um, value of state, which in this case is two. So that means we're getting the second row of the transition matrix when, when we run this. Um, so that's great. So we, you know, we can do that 10 times and then see kind of how our, our uh, path moved along. Look at that, it, it bounced around one for a while, then went to three, back to one, to two, to one, to three. Um, and we can look at how that is over time. There's a lot of really cool visualizations you can do, but I mean, a very simple one is just plotting it with a basic R function. And this, you can see like, you know, one, 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 three, one, one, two, one, three, 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 et cetera. We can see how often it was in each of the states. So it was most often in one, and then a little bit, you know, three, a bunch and, and barely in two. Um, and, you know, these are very crude, like ugly visualizations. You can do much better, but this, this is just like very quick, very nice. You can always just do the table as well, where you see, okay, I was in state one, six times, state two, one, state three, four times. Um, and, that, and that's really neat. And we can really ramp this thing up. We can run this, you know, chain a thousand times. I'm going to run the whole, the whole um, plot um the, the whole code the plot looks a little bit uglier because it's obviously like very small increments so it just kind of looks like black lines well you can see that the the in three is darker because there are more more time spent in three and in terms of the distribution you know there's the most in three the you know the second most in two and then the least in one which jives with what we saw in our um, stationary distribution and the table confirms that you know about 59 percent of the time uh, we're in state three um, great. So hopefully that all makes sense. Again, you know, you can change this around, make have a really complicated transition matrix, do multiple steps, look at different visualizations. Um, but the key element of randomness here is the sample function, which gives you the, you know, the ability to transition between states using the predefined probabilities. So hope that was interesting and we will see you next time.